Welcome back, Foul Mouth Fishing. So, boredom got to me again. <laughs> so I figured, why not tinker around with some toys? So I came up with this idea. Well, I didn't come up with this idea. I actually saw it quite a while ago from, uh, I believe it was Magic Mike, and I think somebody did it before him. But uh, they took basically a, a Finding Nemo toy that they got, I believe, at Target. Uh, back in the day, and uh, they decided to throw some hooks on it and turned it into a fishing lure. And uh, suffice to say, I couldn't come across any of those. I had actually hunted for them back when I had seen that original video, but I couldn't come across any of those Nemo toys. However, uh, recently in my exploits in Walmart, uh, just shopping for terminal tackle and whatnot, I did come across these little guys. Um, these are little Zuro Robo Alive. Uh, they got, you know, they got a clownfish, which is what I started out with first. They got this little blue guy here. Uh, they also come with, you know, little little turtles. And uh, in all honesty, I, I figured, I saw these, they're about five, six dollars a piece. Um, they dive to six feet. They've got little <clears throat> carbon uh, insets that, uh, once water touches the two carbon pins at the same time, it will activate the little swimming tail, and it'll go through a swimming pattern. So it'll kick, 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 and then slow down, and just tick, 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 and then dive, and then float back up as it tick, tick, tick. Now, obviously these toys are balanced and designed, uh, you know, for pools and tubs and what have you. Um, so adding your terminal tackle, your, your uh, whatever you're going to use as a line tie method or you're going to use as a hook tie method, uh, your split rings, and of course your, your treble hooks, which I went with, I think these are size 10 or 14, 10 to 14, something like that, little tiny trebles that I actually cannibalized off of some old, um, some old spoons that I had lying about. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I was bored, so I figured I would do one. I actually got these originally just to throw in the old FMF test tank, just to kind of keep uh, keep it busy, keep it light, have a little something in the background when uh, you know when I'm on camera, rather than just an empty tank. So we can throw these in there and uh, sort of like you know just some ambiance per se. But uh, basically, all you need if you wanted to do this, uh, and I'm probably going to follow up with uh, an on the water to see if it actually will catch a bass. Now, anyone who's, who knows, bass will attack pretty much anything. Um, it's been basically proven they'll attack a stick. If you threw a stick out with a hook on it, you can catch a bass. They're a very hyper-aggressive uh, predatory fish during specific times of the season, but even in general, they're relatively dumb fish. Uh, not quite as dumb as, a, as, say, a muskie, but they're pretty, pretty goofy fish. So, we'll take this guy out of the package. This is one of the blue ones. So, straight out the package, you see it's just this little blue fish has a soft, pliable rubber tail. 
hard plastic body. There's the two pins you can see on the right and the left side of the fin. Um, I just grabbed my, my little tool drill with uh, a 16th inch drill bit. Um, this one's a little bit different. Than, well, no, the clownfish, they both had the same exact pro profile. Um, I shot two different line tie spot positions. So I put uh, one towards the front and one towards the middle just so you can balance it out. And I expect to fish it with, uh, with a bobber. Because, like I say, adding the extra weight of the tackle is going to cause this to sink, submerge, and not necessarily be able to lift itself back up. And just to prevent it from, you know, catching on the bottom and snagging right off the bat, I figured I'd throw a bobber in this way. I can set the level of depth, and it'll just tick around basically like a live fish on, on a bobber and just stay within that water column at that level based on where I set my float. Um, simple. Now, I will say with this, uh, this one I'm only going to do one treble hook on the back. The front fins are actually split, one on the right and one on the left. The back fin, the anal fin, this one is a single fin. So, the first, when I did the first one, it was I actually put a piece of stainless steel tube across. I drilled through both, put the tube through both, put my split ring around the tube, and then the hook laying off. I don't particularly like the way that that works because the uh, the front treble hook kind of gets jammed up. It doesn't have the freedom of motion. But I think just throwing uh, a single treble on a split ring in the back, like so, just pop a hole in the back, and of course I'll put a line tie in the front. And uh, I think that will do and suffice a lot better. So let me try that. I suggest you're going to tie direct to this with your float. And uh, basically all I do, cannibalize, you know, a nice small treble, like real tiny, get my split ring, split ring pliers out. So like I said, I was just tinkering around. I thought it was kind of fun, funny. I just, in remembering the old, uh, the old YouTube video where they did this with a, a slightly larger, well, much larger actual toy, uh, swimming bait or swimming toy. Um, I thought, eh, you know what, I see these, they're cheap enough, I might as well have a little fun and, uh, and give it a shot. Let's put the old split ring on there. Sticky hook, sticky, sticky hook. Um, it does take some doing, depending on where you put your hole. I try to put as much plastic between the area where I tie this split ring on and, uh, and yeah, yeah, pop it out. And uh, where the hook is, just so that it has the extra um, benefit of not, you know, cracking the plastic or uh, or tearing out the split ring from the toy. But I just thought this would be kind of goofy, silly, um, you know, way to spend some time, and uh, just to see, maybe, just maybe, we can catch something on it. So with that in mind. Uh, like I said, they're right now they're in they're in your local WalMarts. I think pretty much everywhere. Um, I think you know for the fun of it, if you got a little interesting uh, you know, time to spend, you got a little bit of craftsman craftiness in you, you might want to just have some fun. Uh, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But why the heck not? I was actually very surprised at how well the one uh, worked on the other YouTube video, and that was a much larger profile than this. So I'm thinking for smaller panfish and what have you, I think this might actually do a, a surprising little trick. And the fact that you can actually have the semi-live presentation of a bait fish, you know, swimming around, as it were, we'll zoom in again. Again, that's not tied on to anything right now. We can see it'll just hinker around, dive down, and then typically, probably going to get hung up on the bottom there somewhere, or trapped in a rock. But um, it'll just basically tinker around, then float back to the top. And uh, see now, once it stops, stops the kicking motion, it'll lift. And then when it goes back to that 
rapid kicking, it'll displace the water and dive. Bounce off a couple rocks. Tick, tick, tick. But I'm really interested to see whether or not this might actually pan out and uh, be a feasible, let me go retrieve it now, a feasible little, uh, little bait. Come here. Come here. There. I can't get the darn thing. No, I'll get you. There you go. Gotcha. And as soon as it comes out of the water, it shuts off. So, yeah. I just thought maybe you guys would be interested in having a little fun. Uh, <laughs> the foul mouth fishing way. Just a little kid. And, um... Like I said, I'll just throw these in there, mostly for ambiance. A uh, short little video, a little craftsman, crafty kind of thing. I hope you had some fun. I hope you enjoyed. Not clickbaity, but uh, I just thought, you know what? A throwback to an old video that I had seen a long time ago might be nice. Uh, like I said, boredom gets to me sometimes, and every once in a while my brain comes up with little crafty ideas. And something inexpensive, fast, cheap and easy, down and dirty, I thought, you know, what the heck not? Uh, I also want to let you know, um, more importantly, the reason for this video, not just to kill some time, but uh, Angler's Hall hasn't arrived yet. It will be coming. Uh, they're having supply chain issues, uh, so especially with the upticks and you know what's happening on the world. Uh, well, mostly in the United States, not necessarily in the world. But uh, with the rise and the uptick and everything, things are being taken, you know, that uh, they're taking steps for safety and precaution. And so um, we're all waiting on the next Angler's Hall Advanced. Um, so the next video you probably see from me, uh, if it's not on the water video, is definitely going to probably be an unboxing of either, um, well, most likely Rush Tackle Box, which is always early in the month, and very, very possibly the secondary video that you're going to see in July um, is going to be, uh, for an unboxing, is going to be a, um, a Mystery Tackle Box. I don't foresee my, my Angler's Hall box getting to me until probably mid-July. Uh, that being said, there will be a give you, giveaway for my birthday. So pay attention. I'm going to have a video uh, with a question. The first person to get that question correct is going to get a box of uh, baits and tackle uh, as my you know annual birthday giveaway. So I hope this was enjoyable. Um, have some little fun. Have a little kid in you come out every once in a while and uh, enjoy enjoy the weather while it's here. And uh, as always, for me to you, tight lines. Hope you stay healthy and happy out there in the, in the real world. And I'll catch you on the next cast. Take it easy, uh, all you fishaholics. All you hookaholics. I keep saying fishaholics. All you hookaholics. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. Peace.